flavored. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a, a choice. If you're miserable, don't tell nobody you know Jesus. Go home, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Oh, praise God. There should be no one miserable. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and in His presence is fullness of joy. The only problem is, is people are lacking His presence. Amen? They're lacking His presence. Do you know how many people don't even know His true presence? They read about it. They might have skimmed it, but they never got in them. See, when we worship, we break through every barrier to touch His heart. That's relationship. You know, when you get a call from someone on the phone, you might know them. Hey, you know. And, and, and if they're people that you love, you want to get in their presence. Amen? Well, if you really love him, you want to get in his presence. And you don't care what people think. Because to know his presence is to know him. Without his presence, you don't know him. You can read all about him and still not know him. This is the difference between religion and relationship. This is the difference between bondage and freedom. Well, I know the truth. How many people know the truth are still bound? You know, are they bound still? No presence. And without presence, there's no anointing. There's no power. And they do it in their own strength. And you can only last so long until you get tempted. So something doesn't go your way. Then people run to the world to the phone instead of the throne because they truly don't have a relationship with eternity. They have a relationship more with temporary. And this is what God is trying to bring his body out of, this religious state that's been handed down through the traditions of men. People brought up in denominations and traditions of men. How many of y'all know God never started denominations? It's not about a denomination. How many people have you asked, hey, man, uh, what faith are you? Are you a believer? Oh, I'm a Catholic, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Protestant, I'm a this. What the heck? That's not faith. That's an organization. God's not interested in organizations. He's interested in whether you know him and you don't know him without his presence. That's different. That's why so many people are bound by drugs and alcohol. What are they looking for? His presence. In fact, they're probably more seekers than some of the people that say they're believers. Even though they're seeking... They're seeking the wrong thing, but they're seeking God's presence, not even knowing it, because that's where we came from. Everybody's looking to feel good. People pay big money to feel good. I paid lots of money to feel good. It was deceiving, because after that feel good was gone, it was terrible. That's why they call it dope. You get real stupid. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In his presence. See, we fight for his presence. You have to fight for God's presence. He just doesn't come because you ask him. What he does, he requires for you to make a place for him. So we have to remove all darkness to make a place for him to come. That's why they did sacrifices. They sacrificed animals in the Old Testament. Why? To remove the sins because the blood had to go before the presence of God. That's why when Jesus showed up, John the Baptist showed up, what did he say? Repent! Activating the blood. Why? Because the kingdom of God is here. In James chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 1. In his presence is fullness of joy. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. How much more do we, does that need to be explained in the Word of God? Of course, if you don't read the Word of God, you don't know God's presence. And if you don't read the Word of God, how can you be a Christian? You can't. You can proclaim to be a Christian, but you don't know the directions. You don't know the guidelines. You don't know the promises. And you don't know the power. Amen? Amen. James chapter 1 and verse 2. <clears throat> Is everybody there? 
let's speak it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Not if, but what? When? When? So God is going to, how many of y'all know that God allows you to fall in various trials? Now, there's a difference between a temptation and an attack. There's, there's, there's differences. The purpose of trials is for training. Amen? Without training, you're not going to learn. And if you're not willing to learn, you're going to burn. You're going to get burned. Amen? The enemy will come back and do the same thing over and over and trick you again every time until you learn it. So we're to count it all joy when we fall into various trials. And those are testings. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now, I want you to grab hold faith. <laughs> There's no such thing as blind faith, number one. Faith comes by hearing. Amen? That means God is telling you to do something, then you do it. It doesn't come by presumption. Now, the reason why we have good faith and we build faith is because of our relationship. Faith. Faith. <laughs> Forever attached in the heavenlies. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Why? Because faith is attached in the heavenlies. It has nothing to do with this realm. It has to do with everything in the other realm. So now you're living from the future to the present, not from the past. To the, there's no faith in the past. There's faith in the future. So in this, faith is forever attached in the heavenlies. Why? Because the word says we're blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. So we are living from the future. You can only live from the future if you're living on the promises of God. Other than that, you're living out of feeling. And those always will disappoint you. Amen? So he says here, now, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, that word patience means endurance. Everyone say endurance. Endurance. Endurance is the power to withstand any challenge. Challenge, attack, no matter. That's endurance. In that word endurance, there's a word called endure. And that word is a representation which means suffer or to undergo. It's a state of being. So he's saying, this is powerful, knowing that the testing of your connection, hello, your relationship, your faith, produces endurance. Endurance. But let patience or endurance have its what? Perfect Work. Perfect work. Mm. That you may be what? Perfect and what? Complete, lacking nothing. Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. <laughs> Again, patience is endurance. It's, it's, it's the area where we endure against any challenge or we have the power to withstand and when he says, make your, let, let your endurance or your patience produce a perfect work. Patience is training. Patience is what? Training. So while you're being trained, you're, you're enduring, isn't it? This is all a part of training. We're being trained for not here. We're being trained for somewhere else. This is all a temporary thing. What you do here affects you when you go home. You know, something happened, I was, uh, I, was, I was, for some reason, I was led to find out what was going on in the world this morning. And I saw President Trump speaking. And he was announcing that they destroyed, killed, and wiped out the family of the head of ISIS. They attacked last night. And one of the things he said, he said, um, well, he said a lot of things, but in the area where uh, they rescued children, but the father, the main head guy, took his three kids, ran into a tunnel, and was screaming, and uh, he uh, ignited his own vest, killed himself and all the children, and the tunnel he ran into collapsed. And President Donald Trump mentioned something. He said, you know what? 
Everyone will pay. Everybody pays. He said they'll either they're going to pay with us as U.S. military, uh, US military but they're also going to pay before God Almighty. I've never heard a president say that. That they'll pay before God Almighty. So he knows, you may escape now, but you're going to pay. Nobody gets away with it. Again, faith is attached to the heavenlies. Forever attached in the heavenlies. It's living from the future and the promises of God. We become perfect and movable, steadfast, complete, not wavering. That's what perfect is. What is perfect? You're not wavering. You're staying. You're steadfast. You're faithful. Nobody can move you. And you're, you're not wavering, and you know that God is faithful to complete what he started. That's why you don't lack anything. Now, he, in lacking anything, it's a representation lacking anything physically and spiritually. Why? Everything is granted for me and you to fulfill our mission. Everyone born in this world has a mission. God sent them. The problem is that many people haven't been awakened yet or unplugged from the world. Like I said, there's drug addicts that are seeking God more than Christians are. I knew when I was out there using, I used to talk about God all the time. I wanted to know who he was. I knew that one day I'm going to have to be accountable to him. That's what feared me the most. I didn't know him. But I had died so many times and overdosed and was rescued multiple times. And every time, I never realized that I was actually going after his presence because I didn't know it was what I was looking for. See, I didn't even know I was looking for him, even though I was crying out to him for help. Then when his presence come, everything changed. I changed. I realized that everything I was looking for was him. I realized I came from another place, and this was temporary. And I got a new identity. I'm a son of God Almighty. It set me loose from being a son of my parents. Even though I was, I thanked them. Thank you for allowing me to come. Thank you, Mom, for bringing me in. Thank you, Dad, for participating. <laughs> Even though I brought hell into that house for a while, <laughs> then I brought heaven. <laughs> After heaven came and got me, <laughs> then I started bringing heaven to every world. And all of these things that we've been through and, and gone through in our trials, all of this is going to turn around to help somebody else. It says we overcome that a word of our testimony, the blood of Christ, and we didn't love our lives to death. It's not about a pleasing man. It's about a pleasing the God. It's not about pleasing family. It's about pleasing him. I realized then. You know, word says that we're to hate our families, this, that, and whatever, mothers and fathers. It doesn't mean literally hate them. It means that he's got to be first. He's got to be first. Or else we compromise. When he's not first, we compromise. And the enemy knows when we compromise. Oh, he waits for that moment of compromise so he can slide something in, so we can sway. It's amazing how many people have started in a true belief system what God says and interpret it correctly and then change the interpretation later because they've compromised. It only takes one corruptible seed to turn everything around. And that's why the Word says that many will fall from the faith, taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons because that one little corruptible seed is a doctrine of demon. What people used to believe that were correct then got compromised. And now they're incorrect and don't even know it. In 1 Peter chapter 1, Hallelujah! 1 Peter chapter 1. 
Welcome to Sunday morning training. Training for reigning. And we have the eternal manual in front of us. Part of it anyways, but we have the eternal presence who's going to guide us and interpret anything that you don't understand. It's called the Holy Spirit. 1 Pete 1, verse 3. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are we in the last days? In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, even as need be, you have been what? Grieved by various trials. That the what? Genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Genuine means, you know, in this, he's saying to testing your genuineness of your faith, your reality. When you are genuine, there's a different reality to you. You're in a reality that is true righteousness. It's a reality of the future. That's what he's saying. G testing your what? Genuineness of your what? Your faith, your connection, your relationship. In Christ, whether it's sure and true, where you're living from the future or from the past. You know, one of the things that we're always combating is the emotional attachments of desire. And these emotional attachments of desire, which are these attacks are always trying to get us to react instead of respond. Trying to get us to what? React instead of respond. In James chapter 1, and verse 12. How I many you know God checks your endurance? Your endurance is tested. How, do you, how much do you endure in the area of worship? How do you endure? In everything, are you one that endures to the end? Are you able to see it through the end? Are you able to complete the things you've started? In verse 12, let's speak it. Hallelujah. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation. Hello. Blessed is the man who endures it. For when he has been approved. So that means God's watching. He's going to see whether you're genuine. He wants to know whether you're living from the future. Whether you're standing on what he says, not what man says. Not what your emotions say. Not what religiosity says. But what the spirit of the living God says. Blessed is the man who endures for what? He will be, when he is approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. There's a reward for endurance. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. God doesn't tempt us. But who tempts us? The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He's your tempter. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires. How many of you know all desire is an emotion? Amen. And enticed. And when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, which is the presence of evil. In other words, it's opened up more of the presence of evil. And when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the what? 
word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, a kind of first fruits that overcome. That what? Overcome. Again, temptation, attacks of emotional desires to react in the flesh. Blessed are those who overcome the attack, allowing the training through patience so that you may be known as a first fruits of creation that overcome evil influences. People will recognize. People will see. They'll know. They'll know when you don't laugh at their dirty jokes. They'll know when you don't approve of abortion. They'll know when, and eh, I don't approve of any of that. You'll carry a presence on you, which is called the anointing. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to places and never said anything. And a person that I'm doing something with all of a sudden gets convicted. Not because I said anything, even though I'd like to. He always tells me, not now. Come on, let me do this. <laughs> let me tell him the truth, Dad. You said you want everyone, no, nobody to perish. It's not now, guy. He's not ready to receive it. Okay. But the anointing, the presence of God that we carry, all of a sudden that person gets convicted. I love it when I go to Lowe's and somebody doesn't know me there. And, and somebody will come up and start saying, yeah, they're over here. They're over this place. And all of a sudden, they'll go, I'm sorry. They don't even know what they're sorry about because they cussed. You know, oh, sorry about that. It's him. It's just about him, not us. But we want to be so connected and so saturated and oozing with God's presence and love that wherever we go, we leave a footprint of him. Amen. We leave his fragrance. We leave a remembrance. There's something about that person. Strange, but something about them. I just can't figure it out. Galatians 6. Hallelujah. So the enemy is always trying to attack us with these emotional desires that cause us to react. Listen, you cannot overcome without the presence of God. That's all is to it. That's what, that's what we've lacked. I hear people going to these cemetery schools. I mean seminary schools. There's nothing we're going and learning, but the problem is, is most of them I talked with, have you ever cast, they don't even know about casting out devils. They know that there's a devil. That's good. What about it? They've never reached the level of God's presence. I remember when I, after I got saved, I said, Lord, do you want me to go to school? What do you want me to do? He said, here's the Holy Spirit. He is now your mentor. He is your nanny. He's going to guide you, teach you, and teach you how to read. See, I couldn't even read. And every time the Holy Spirit would come and train me and teach me, and I would get to a point of frustration, he'd say, stop. And speak what I speak. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me shall profit. See, now I was bringing the future into the present and combating the present so he could teach me. And then he begins to visit in dreams and visions and brings more reality. See, one of the things he wants to do is make the other side more real to you than this side. And that can't happen without God's presence. In Galatians 6, verse 3, or verse 7, I'm sorry. Galatians 6, 7. What does it say? Do not be what? Deceived with Satan's greatest weapon. Deception in his power is fear. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he's going to what? In other words, nobody gets away with it. For he who sows to his flesh will the flesh reap what? Corruption. 
So this is what the enemy tries to attack me and I on, is so that we react and not respond. Because when you react, you're sowing in the flesh. And then it opens the door to the enemy. But he who sows to the Spirit, will the Spirit reap love? everlasting life. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not what? Lose heart. That means we don't give up. That means we're going to need endurance, isn't it? And when say, I need endurance. 1 Corinthians 10. So you understand if the enemy can get you to sow in the flesh, he's got access to you. Then it's your responsibility to repent and remove them. Repentance doesn't move, remove them. Repentance gives you the ability to access them and remove them. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Let's speak it. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all of our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were baptized in Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, which means the anointing. Amen? But what, with most of them, God was not pleased for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our example to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat, drank, and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in, 23, and in one day, 23,000 fell. Wow. Wow. One day. I think things would be different if God was still doing that today. We wouldn't have a Democratic Party. Hallelujah. Verse 9, or Democratic Party. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. By what? Serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as an examples and they were written for our admonish upon whom the ends of the ages has come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. Now no temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the same temptation will make the way of escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. Wow. Temptation and challenges. Again, there's these temptations that are also we call attacks. So there's temptation and attacks. But we're to overcome every single one. God always makes a way. Listen, when you're struggling, the, the enemy knows when you're struggling. Usually, you, I'm you think I'm struggling. The enemy knows what you're thinking. So immediately you think you're struggling, you're agreeing with that voice because he's the one that sent it. God didn't send, you're struggling. The devil sends, you're struggling. And then you go, oh, I must be struggling. I think I'm struggling. And so when he knows when you're struggling, he's going to attack you more. He's going to try and find, why? Because it's like a hook and bait, and that, that line is a communication line. It's called demonic frequency. And then he sends out more and more afterwards, slightly, little bit at a time. He doesn't overwhelm it until he knows he can. Little bit. So you're walking around with a hook in your jaw for days, not knowing, under, you, can't, you can't understand why you're struggling because you agreed with it. Not able to overcome it. And God's trying to make a way of escape. He's trying to get our attention. Somebody come across your past, whatever it is, he might have showed you something, even conviction. How many of you know conviction gets attention? Chastening will get attention. Judgment gets attention. 
but all this to prevent us from the wrath. And so then what he'll do, he gets your attention. When he finally gets your attention, he makes a way of escape. And then he brings you through the process of getting all the hooks out of your jaw and bringing healing because he begins to show you. But again, many times with individuals, they struggle for years because they've never reached the level of God's presence. There's a level of God's presence that you and I must maintain or we stay there. People sick for the rest of their lives. People miserable and oppressed. They've never reached the level of presence of God to be free. Is everybody okay? You, what do they need? Endurance. Everyone say endurance. Luke 22, it's just for you. Luke 22. Everybody okay? In verse 39. Now Jesus coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives and his, as it was a custom, and his disciples also followed him in verse 40. Now he came to a place, and he said to them, pray that you may not enter what? Temptation. What was he telling them? Get connected. See, he couldn't tell them what to do unless he was getting ready to do it himself. God will never tell you something that he hasn't done already. Verse 41, and he was, uh, was with, uh, he was, uh, he withdrew from, uh, from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. See, people don't realize that in God's presence, there are angels that come from the presence of the Lord and carry a fresh presence with them. They come and worship with us. Mm. Verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly that his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into what? Temptation. He told them again, man, you got to make connection. You got to make connection. Without connection, temptation is going to overcome you. Get connected to endure or fall into temptation because the enemy sets traps for you every single day. 1 Timothy 6. First Timothy six and verse three. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness, he is what? Proud. He's what? Proud, knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such withdraw yourselves. Do not associate with them. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts 
which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, man or woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things before Christ Jesus who witnesses the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot and blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He is the blessed and only potent a king of kings and lord of lords, who alone has immortality dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen and amen. Many seeking money for self will fall into temptation, the temptational trap of, and it because it's sowing in the flesh and then they reap corruption. The word says that we're withdraw from these individuals. They, why? Because they reject the doctrine of Christ Jesus and disobey it. Many people become influenced by these individuals. In Hebrews 12, you see it all over the world. The media is a tremendous influence. Sports are a tremendous influence. Sports players famous billionaire, millionaire, and trillionaires are influences. The problem is, is many of them are causing the wrong influence. Amen? Hebrews 12. Let's speak it. For consider him, Jesus, who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son or daughter, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. Whom the Lord loves, he chases and scourges every son and daughter whom he receives. If you what? Endure correction, chastening. God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son or daughter is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, which have become a partakers, then you are illegitimate and not children of the Most High God. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they did indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. But he, God, for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. That's his character. That's his glory. That's his nature. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a, the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been what? Trained by it. Trained by it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Everyone say discipline. Can you endure without discipline? No. No. Oh, happy days. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Discipline is no thrills. Discipline has nothing to do with thrills. Discipline is the state of being doing the right thing regardless of what. Now, discipline is the key to endurance. Does everybody get it? Discipline is the key to endurance. Without discipline, you can't endure. In verse 24, is everybody there? Oh, happy days. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, well, they all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. 
And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus not with uncertainty. Thus I fight not with one who beats the air. But I what? Discipline my body and bring it in subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself be should become disqualified. How many of y'all know you got to discipline your thoughts, your thinking? You got to discipline your emotions. How about your decisions? How about your reactions? Not to react. Amen? So you and I must discipline everything. Discipline is the key to endurance. Discipline is associated with practicing to make perfect. Why? Because you continue to repeat it until it's perfected. That is discipline. Proverbs 15. In verse 7. Proverbs 15, verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fools does not do so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who follows righteousness. Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way, and he who hates correction will die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the sons of men. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him, nor will he go to the wise. Wow. A merry heart makes a cheerful confidence, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart is a, has a what? Continual feast. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with trouble. <laughs> Better to dine of herbs where love is than fatted calf with hatred. Now, there's something important about that. He says harsh discipline. You know what? I'm very hard on myself. I mean, I'm, I'm hard on myself. I mean, that's just how I am. I am. I, 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 I want to be perfect, but then I know we make mistakes. But my perfection is not a selfish or prideful. My perfection is because I want to please God in everything I do. That's the area where we want to be perfect in. I want him to be pleased in everything. All decisions, works, everything. No matter what we're doing, we want to please him. Amen? So we see here that the key, the key to uh, endurance is discipline. Amen? And the key to discipline is consistency. That means you must be consistent in everything. Now, the key to consistency is the fear of the Lord. I'm going to say this again. We need endurance, right? The key to uh, discipline is the key to endurance. The key to discipline is consistency. The key to consistency is the fear of the Lord. And the key to the fear of the Lord is His presence. Maintaining His presence. Temptations. They are attacks to remove your restraints. Restraints of what? Re the flesh. Where there's no restraints. See, in the anointing of God, in the presence of God, we have restraints. We restrain. In other words, we're restraining the old man that wants to react in everything. The anointing separates us from the old man. We have dominion over him. Even when he speaks and when he thinks, he has no effect. There's a separation between the old man who is the servant of the devil and the offspring of darkness. Then a new creation is created from the future. Hello. Remember, the old man is created from the past. The new man is created from the future. That's why we're homebound. But there's a battle within you between the old and the new. The old is called the flesh. 
So when you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. Why? Because you open a door to more demonic stuff from your past. So as we sow in the spirit, we're, we're reaping more the things of the future. So we've got to be disciplined in this area, maintain a level of consistency. Amen. And in this maintaining the level of consistency, we must maintain a level of the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is reverence, honor, and respect. How can you reverence and honor and respect God without knowing His presence? That will not come by just reading the Word of God. It comes by experiencing His presence. Amen? And so we remember the enemy is trying to get you to take off these restraints. So you sow in the flesh and read corruption. In Hosea chapter 4. Hosea 4. Give him the page number. Heck, he help him. Amen? Show him the page number. Is it the same Bible? That would be bad if it was. He'd be somewhere else. Hosea. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Glory. Hosea chapter something. Four. I'm getting there. Hosea four one. Praise God. You there? Are you on it? Good. Speak it now. Hosea 4, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. You know when God speaks to Israel, he also speaks to the body. Amen. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land. By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break all what? Restraint. With bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore the land will mourn and everyone who dwells there will waste away. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the seas will be taken. Wow. So we see here that this all started because the influence of the enemy. There was not enough endurance. They didn't maintain. Amen. They weren't consistent. The restraints were removed. Remember, the enemy is always trying to remove our restraints. That's the number one thing. The first restraint he wants to remove from you is your identity. If he can remove your identity or compromise your identity, he's got you. No restraints. They did, could not practice the truth. No discipline. There was no knowledge. In other words, revelation. No what? Revelation. Go to Proverbs 29 and then one more scripture. Proverbs 29. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Ver Proverbs 29, verse 18. What does it say? Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraints. Wow. Revelation comes from the presence of God. Where there's no revelation, people cast off restraints, but happy is he who keeps the law. No revelation, no restraints. And I'm going to close at Hebrews 12, verse 12. Endurance. We need endurance. We need to be consistent. Hebrews 12. Verse 12. 
The word says forsake not to assemble, right? That's where the anointing comes from. Increasing of God's presence. We can't do it without him. That must be a reality to every single one. In verse 12, let's speak it. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be healed. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of true repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. How many of you know crying is not repentance? Does everybody get it? Tears do not bring repentance. That's sorrow. Most people are more sorry for what they lost than truly what they did. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burn with fire and to blackness and darkness and tentus and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as the beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned or shot with the arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of a sprinkling that speaks better than that of Abel's. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Once more I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of the things that are being shaken as of the things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptable with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Endurance. Lord, we thank you for your word today. I pray that your seed, anointed seed of endurance would be imparted in each and every one. That revelation would come to maintain the restraints and the understanding of endurance and discipline, consistency, your presence and fear and revelation that we need on a daily basis. We call on the name above all names, Jesus, to help us and guide us to release his spirit that we may be led with endurance all the way home in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.